nation's favourite celebrities. Paired up with an expert. Get excited. And a classic car. She's beautiful. Ooh, what's steaming? Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. Is that antique? I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no easy ride. There's a dog chasing us! Who will find a hidden gem? Love that. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? Yeah, okay, I know what that means. Yeah. There will be worthy winners. Yes! And valiant losers. Disaster. Put your pedal to the metal. Let's go shopping. Woohoo! This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Cookaburra. We have a couple of fizzy showstoppers, Claire Sweeney and Steps Popstrel Ian H. Watkins. You look like a rock star behind Me, the wheel. Me, a rock star? Yeah, you do. I mean, look. I think I'd be the of looking like a rock star. Yeah. It's blowing in the wind. You've got chiffon on. Like a fine wine, dear. <laughs> Matthias Rosé. <laughs> <laughs> Our sparkling stars of stage and screen have been best chums since the 90s. So do you know anything about antiques? Because I haven't got a clue. I don't know about specific eras or styles, but... Is that a no? <laughs> <laughs> You're partial to a Toby joke. <laughs> and look at this for a bit of 80s retro. The sporty, gull-winged DeLorean. This, this has a cassette. You know, it's fantastic, isn't it? Our cars now don't even have CD players, do they? No, it's all Bluetooth, isn't it? No. Because you remember when we used to sit there with the tape and wind it with a pencil? Yes. <laughs> what fun. Tragedy. H achieved stratospheric success with dance pop group Steps. Tell me about the car. <laughs> so it's a 1980 DeLorean. In 1980, you would have paid 26 grand. For I wonder what it's worth today, actually. I know. It's worth the same price as Helder's price. Yeah, Helder's price is supposed to go up. <laughs> <laughs> now a star of hit musicals, Claire first found fame in a controversial British soap opera. In gear. Get in gear. She's very heavy, she is. Oh, here oh, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Are we insured for this? <laughs> dear, oh, dear. Steering them through the antiques fog are the wise old sages David Harper and James Braxton in a Lotus Esprit. It's synonymous with Roger Moore, this car, isn't it? It is. And Roger Moore's very famous when he oh. dangled that. And it was rather sort of camp, wasn't it? Because yeah. the fish was a bit too small. It was yeah. the thing. Somebody found a little goldfish. That was very funny, wasn't Only it? Only Roger Moore could get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the late, great Roger Moore, eh? But these chaps are in a Series 3 version of the Esprit and have a licence to thrill, not kill, we hope. I rather like this. It has a slightly sort of spaceshipy feel, does, doesn't it? Does. It's a bit Star trek -y, isn't it? Star trek -y. It reminds me of a sort of government sort of uh, dispatch box, this red leather. James Braxton. Look Only you could say that. I concur, David Harper. A DeLorean. Whoa. Now, time to get acquainted, you lot. Oh! <laughs> My gosh, Claire oh Sweeney in a DeLorean. <laughs> Trying to get out of that thing and look elegant. <laughs> you coped <laughs> admirably, Claire. You're all right. <laughs> Hello. You all right? How are you doing? You okay? You. Lovely to meet you. Claire, Hi, how are good you? to see you. Good good to see you. Hey, very good to meet you. You too, you very too. Good. How come we got here first when they're in a car that actually time travels? <laughs> exactly, yeah. How, how does that work? I don't know. That's a rubbish DeLorean. I know, That's but we look 20 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should we pair up? Get going? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Shall I drive? You can try. I'll drive. I can drive. You can drive. Oh. oh, wow. This is classic. Oh, ours is better than yours. You've done well, dear. We've got windows that work. <laughs> Let the jolly Jake oh, begin. This is a, oh, we've definitely got the better car. <laughs> you hey, do you, do you like antiques? I like very quirky, unusual objects. I like mixing lots of different eras. OK, perfect. So I love Victorian, I yeah. love the 70s. I actually collect a lot of circus and fairground art. OK, fine. So my house is, looks like a little bit of a, a junk shop. Oh, no! 
how are you, one, with antiques and two, with negotiating? I'm good at negotiating. I thought you might be. If you guide me at what I need to fight for. OK. <laughs> no, you don't have to actually physically fight, Claire. <laughs> Strictly no fisticuffs, Claire. Let's check out the route. Our antiques explorers will be journeying around Gloucestershire, Worcestershire, and we'll skip and hop through Monmouthshire and we'll head for an auction finale in Harrogate. But let's start in Gloucester. Now, our sparkling guests will each have £400 to splurge. There it is. Yodi yodi. Oh, look at that. Dusty That's old tat. That look good. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's do it. I'll tell you what. What a beautiful day. It is a lovely day. <laughs> you all right there? <laughs> Come on. I thought you Let's did yoga, it. Jimbo. Anyway, H and James are venturing upstairs and downstairs. In here. Here we go. Is this fun? Kid in a sweet shop. Look at it. <laughs> What's this? Oh, look. And is that wooden? Yeah, it is. It looks like it's seen better days. Seen better days. That is amazing. It's just missing its cannon, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh-oh. Is that? Oh, I am. <laughs> it is. Uh, I'm sorry, we're back your shot. <laughs> all I That's heard all right. was it's, it's missing right. its cannons. It's missing its cannons. We're actually going to be shopping with the competition today. Is that fair? Of well, we can help. Sure. It's, all it's fairs missing, in missing love and war. Cannons. We don't need any help, thank you. Really? Well, yeah, we're oh, all good. Nice. <laughs> Has it got a price? There's no price on it, actually. Better leave free. It to it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was so free. Sorry. Free, so free, sorry. free. You're all right, don't worry. Good luck. Thank you. You'll need it. H is in full-on battle mode. Now, let's cosy in with Claire and David. I love the car and I love the petrol tanker, but they're both reproductions of... Yeah. Earlier ones. How much is that AC? If we got both of them for under 100 quid. Well, you don't look about it. <laughs> What's all that about? Do you want to go for lunch or something? Do you want to go <laughs> <this over? laughs> Claire. Oh, look at that tank. I see. I quite like that. That's great. Were they that looking wooden? at that? They were looking at that when we came in. Oh, that's great, isn't Actually, it? Actually, I really yeah. like that. Why didn't they buy it? I don't know. It's missing its tracks. It's missing its guns. And wooden toys are, you know, making a real comeback. They're expensive, but think about it. It's much more eco-friendly than producing plastics that will never degrade. Yes. Right, well, tell me, shall we get a price? Let's get a price. And a bit more information. I'd, yeah, I'd like to get a story on this as well, to find out well, where you it's like the from. the story. OK, so this, this chap here looks like he's quite official. Hello. Hello. What's your Hello. name? My name's Vic. Hello, Vic. I'm Hi, David. Vic. I'm Claire. Good to see you. You OK? Good to see you, yes. Tell us what you know about this, Vic. Right, uh, there is a little story behind that. It was made by American soldiers. During the war, they were stationed at Tewkesbury. They came along the tank along Tewkesbury Road and the little boy stood at the gate crying. And they got ahead of the tank and took it over. It's got definite provenance. 100%. Vic regularly does house clearances and got the provenance from the cellar of the toy tank. Their late father was the little boy given this very special gift. I treasure it, and I think maybe 150. 150, right, OK. One, two, five, yeah. Have we just done a deal? Has that yeah, just okay. happened? One, well, she's saying one, two, five. One, ten, we'll have it. Yeah. One, twenty. Happy? Shake his hand. First deal done. Well done. Great. Thank you very much indeed. I love it. Thank you very I much, yeah. That's a true story. You hold on to that yes. and we'll, we'll come and pay you later. That's absolutely yeah. Great. OK. Cheers, Vic. Come on. Well done. Well done. Straight in. You don't look about, do you? That leaves Claire £280 left to spend. Now, how the heck? Or H and James fairing. Um, I love. Well, why do you like the lamp? I love really kind of uh, old and beaten architectural pieces, um, and I can just imagine that in its day in a factory somewhere. I love that kind mm. of industrial look. It's quite simple. I quite like the design of the stand. That simple loop, isn't it? Yeah. Is it weighty? Yeah. No, actually, it's all right. Quite nice. I think isn't it's it? aluminium. Is it aluminium? Yeah. So this is polished aluminium. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't have a price. Let's have a chat with Dealer Vic. Vic. Hi there, how are you doing? You OK? Well, I think we were just trying to find a Steps record. Oh, were you? To, yeah, to put it on. Oh, they're, oh, they're, they're very expensive to use. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite. Yes, All yes. those royalties coming yeah. in. Yes. Now, we, we picked that one off the desk. Yes. We, have, we can't find a, 
a price on it. I bought it off another dealer here to use as display piece, but oh, I think maybe one and a half, something like that. Something to think about, H. Now, what else for our newbie antique Claire? I was quite drawn in here when I saw all this boating memorabilia, and this is That's fantastic. Now, okay. You know, when you think, where has this been? Where has it sailed? What was, you know, what's the story to it? Imagine the sensation of actually, you know, navigating Absolutely. that boat across choppy seas. Yeah. Holding on sometimes for dear life, if that could talk. All right, David. The handles are obviously, you know, turned handles. It looks a bit 19th century. And then look at the way it's put together. Can you see these pegs? Can you see they're not perfectly round, so they're not machine-made pegs. So it is a handmade wheel, made in a boatyard. How much would you expect to pay for it? 100 quid. 100 quid. 80 quid, 100 quid, okay. ideally. What about you? What's your instinct? Oh, I haven't got a clue. You do have a clue, that's the a thing, clue. you do have a clue. I would have thought more 120. OK, we need to speak to Vic about price, and he's just hovering. Vic, come on in, come on, let's, let's talk to you about this wheel. We, we think it's late 19th century? Yep, it's a Victorian chips wheel or Edwardian chips wheel. A real one, not a reproduction. Quite valuable, sought after, and of course we're in the docks area. Um, one. 30 and that's I'm leaving at 130. Go with your instinct. What's your gut feeling? 125. Oh, Shake your hand. God. Thank you. I can't believe it. I'm, she's, she's coming with me every day. I said to you yes. 120, didn't yes, I? Yes, you were beginning. right. So All right, Claire, you're always right. Yes. Thank, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. It's lovely. Oh, yes, that it's lovely. Okay. Mm. 120. <laughs> <laughs> Am I completely defunct here? How much do we owe you? 120. <laughs> 120. <laughs> Gosh, that kiss makes for another fiver off. Claire leaves with the ship's wheel and the World War II scratch-built tank and her purse is £240 lighter. Back to the boys. What about the chairs, Vic? Right, the chairs are from a local barber shop yeah. uh, called Lords and Ladies. The chairs spin round. Yeah. OK. So, so, so that spins round. That spins right round. So the you. barber could sit down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those two are for sale, a couple of hundred pounds each. I'm sure we could do one for about one fifty. I think it's really funny. Yeah, it's fun. But barber shops are big things now. They're the great survivors of the high street. Aren't oh, totally. They? Yeah, absolutely. And you can imagine how many people have sat in this chair. The hydraulic barber chair was invented by Ernest Cochan in 1900, an enterprising salesman, not a barber. What age do you think this is? After the war. 50s. I would say 1950s. Yeah, I think so. It's... The engineering in it is really fabulous. It is amazing. And that thing literally spins all the way around the chair. What could you do for the two? For both of them? Yeah. 250. I'm not even going to try and knock you down anymore because it's rude, because I think that's amazing. They are amazing. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> yeah, I would have Shake them. Shake the man's hand. hand. Go yeah. on, well done, Vic. Fan. Well You're done, welcome. Vic. I'm so excited. I would actually have them in my house. Great. I'm really pleased. Yeah. I think we've done our bit. Uh -huh. I think you should pay for it and we should move on. Absolutely. Thank you very That's much, That's the Vic. best bit. Thank you very much. OK, so 250, yeah? <laughs> yes. Well very, so very excited. Be very best of luck, fellas. I really hope to do well and I'm Thank sure you. they will. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Very much. Gent. Looks like I'll be hiring a man with a van for the two barber chairs that have taken more than half of their budget. A bold buy from H, eh? Meanwhile, where are Claire and David? I'm so disciplined during the day. I'll do my yoga. Right. I'll, you know, count my coffees, drink my water, all that. Right. And then it's the evening, especially if I've done a show. After the show, I just want a dirty curry. Really? <laughs> We're off to the village of Malvern Wells in Worcestershire. Healthy living isn't anything new, you know, because here at Holy Well, they've believed in the power of water for centuries, and it's thought to be the oldest bottling plant in the world. Claire and David are finding out just why this purported healing H2O made the Victorians flock here in their droves. It's nice to be in the cool shade, isn't oh, it? I hey? know, I know. <laughs> Do you know, I've been to Malvern many times. Have you? What holiday? I'm a real fan of the place. I've worked at the theatre a lot, and I always stay in the same place. When not I come. And the it's water. the end of this lane where I stay, and I've never been here. Eh. Well, you're in for a treat, Claire. The Precambrian granite, which forms the Malvern Hills, is one of the hardest rocks in the UK. 
for sheer density acts as nature's filter and makes the water famous for its purity. I can't lie. Now, you, you... Well, I didn't expect to see this. Well, what did you expect to see? Well, I just saw the house and a doorway. I didn't <laughs> expect this. While we're here, it'd be rude not to. So, do you want to do it first? Yeah, go on. Go on, then. OK. <laughs> How's it taste? Come back. What does it taste like to London water? Oh gosh, no, not like London no. water. Like Liverpool water. It's lovely, isn't it? It is lovely. I bet it's good for your skin and your hair as well. Well, why don't you pour it over your head, see if it works? <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you two. Best behaviour. We're meeting Mike Hum. Custodian of the Holy Well, who can tell us why this natural spring would help turn Malvern into one of the first health spas. So, Mike, what is the history of the Holy Well? Well, the water, which is what it's all about, first came into history in about 1558, when Queen Elizabeth I granted the rights of the spring to the landowner. He bought it and she said, you've got to give rest and refreshment to travellers. For free? Free because this was the only road going towards Wiles, and pilgrims to St David's used to go past the front door, and he was obligated to give rest and refreshment. In 1622, the monks from Great Malvern Priory are believed to be the first to bottle water from the Holy Well Spring for the elderly and infirm. It was kind of known as a sort of medical thing, you know, because yeah. it's, so, it's so clean, but it's only about the purity of the water. For centuries after, the water was bottled locally. Until 1843, when Mr Schwepp came to town and started to commercialise more than water. This is the well that they, they had built, and it was built as a bottling plant. They kind of bought the land and they... I think, first of all, they kind of rented and, and started sampling the water, realised the importance of it. At the Great Exhibition of 1851, it became a firm favourite with Queen Victoria. And a few years later, she named Malvern a spa town. There's the Malvern Cure, and it was created in Victorian times, where we would get people to come to Malvern, and they would drink very, very pure water and a lot of it. They would eat very little, and they would exercise on the hills. The craze would see visitors being doused in cold water, wrapped in wet sheets and dunked in cold baths. Brr. Not sure about that. And in Victorian times, where they didn't look after themselves, ate too much, didn't exercise, it was like a, a revelation to them. <laughs> and, and they felt so good afterwards. Didn't feel so good sometimes going through the early part of the cure, but they, they felt so good afterwards. People flocked in their thousands here, including celebrities of the day, such as Florence Nightingale, Charles Dickens and Charles Darwin. Darwin, for instance, spent five weeks here before he wrote The Origin of the Species. <laughs> and, the, and the kind of the story is that he could, he could barely hold a pen before he wrote, wrote it. But after he left Malvern, he was invigorated, really, really fit and well. So what's fascinating for me, Mike, is nowadays we know if we drink clean water, eat healthy, we're going to detox, it's going to be good for us. But then did people believe that the water had more mysticism around oh, it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some people even thought it was the elixir of life. Not only is it good for your insides, it must be good for your hair and your skin as well. Oh, yeah, if David had stuck his head under the font there, yeah. he'd have hair by now. Yeah, yeah I think he'd have a fringe if you lived here, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think, yeah. Would it suit me, <laughs> yeah. it? Oh, yeah, Lovely absolutely. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> nice to see Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Lovely. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Malvern and its waters were a hit with wealthy Victorians, but the glowing benefits could also be attributed to a break from rich, fatty diets and sedentary lifestyles in smoggy cities. You've been here you so let many us times. have a little bottle to take? He's gone now. He should have asked that earlier on. Now, what about best buddies H and James? Do you think Claire, is she a competitive lady? Claire's competitive, but I know she has zero knowledge about anything. That's more than five-year-old. OK, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Claire shops at Harrods and Liberties and Harvey Nicks. Yeah. She'll know nothing about this. They're bound for the Cotswold town of Winchcombe, 
Here we are. Perfect. Oh, lovely, isn't it? Let's get... Let's get on. <laughs> let's... Let's... let's Do you need a hand? Paramedic. <laughs> I need a paramedic. <laughs> Come on. A Lotus Esprit and a Braxton don't seem to quite fit, do they? <laughs> The chaps are going to have a frolic in here with their £150. There's over two floors packed with potential goodies. That's really pretty. Yeah, so one of these hall chairs. Good weight to it. Made of mahogany, so really solid wood. That's a solid piece of mahogany. And they sometimes call... You know how it's sort of rippled here? Yeah. They call this plum pudding mahogany. So it looks like sort of fruit in its own liquor. But that's not a defect, that's just the way it's no. worked. These chairs, hall chairs, so if you came to see somebody, you were probably put on the hall, depending on your status, yeah, really. Uh -huh. And they didn't... That upholstery was so expensive. And you didn't know quite where people had been. People, I think, were oh. less clean years ago. So, something wipeable. I would say this is about early 19th century. Okay. 1800, 1820. And it's sturdy for that. Quite. It doesn't have a price, though. How much do you think, James? So, price-wise, if that's under sort of 40, 50 pounds, that's probably worth going for. Because it's slightly ordinary, it's in good condition. Dealer Richard is the man to chat pounds and pence with. So, we've got our eye on this little beauty here. Yeah, uh, nice old chair. Uh -huh. and if we could have the lowest prices, Richard. And then we'll knock you down even helpful. more. <laughs> it's, it's unusual, yeah. but it would need to be under sort of 40 quid, I thought. So, 35 quid. Even Can't though. argue with that. I'll leave that with us, because I've still got my eye on a few more bits and bobs as well. All right. Shall we go and have a look around? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But thank you. Let the mooch continue. <laughs> it doesn't the, become you enough. <laughs> the nearest I get to being academic. Now, what's this you found? What, a tractor and trailer? Yeah. I'll match you a tractor and trailer. What about this? The first thing in the room. I mean, the... <laughs> They're completely okay. different. They are totally different. This is lacquer with this cinnabar, this red lacquer, and we've got irises on the top. And you give me tractors. Yeah, but is this reproduction or is it? does it have some age to it? Or I think it's got a bit of age. Let's have a look. Any clues underneath? Always look underneath. There are reeves. The label there, classic 1920s lettering, isn't okay. it? Very blocky. I'd say probably made in the 1920s. With the toy tractor discarded, let's get Richard. We were thinking, yep. we've got the chair there, yep. this fellow there. Yep. Could you do those two items for 100? No. Well, <laughs> All right. you can't say fairer than that. Again, there's a certain frankness about you. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. What would you want for that? Are we near, though? Uh, I thought we were near on that. What did we say that. for the chair? We said 35. 35, yeah, So that's that would right. be putting 35. that at 65. Yeah, no, I can't do that. Um, it's, it hasn't got a great age, has it? No, I know, but you know these things are quite desirable, eh? You uh, say a, you say 100 and you've got a deal. Or I could say 110, but I think 105 will splitting the difference. What, do we want them? He's sticking at 105, so... Well, there's a good potentially 70 in there, Hoy. If you're wrong, I'm knocking on your door. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> 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 Thank you. No, Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. That's Thank fair you. enough. So you want some money? Give him some money. Ten. Thirty-five pounds for the hall chair and seventy for the Chinese plant stand. I don't think we're going to squeeze them in, are we? Let's just put them down there. There we go. I must say, I have a hard enough job getting myself in this car, let alone, <laughs> let alone Do you need an two assistant? items of furniture. What about the bridge? Do you, would you take care of those? Somebody will collect them. Thank no you. No problem. You, Better get dialing the blooming man with the van again. That's the shopping done for today. I went to see HGA where I went to Steps. They were fantastic. We've been through thick and thin. We've been through breakups. We've been through career highs, career lows, children. He's a wonderful friend and he's a, a long-standing, true, loyal friend and I love the bones of him. Have you enjoyed today, H? I've had a ball, actually. Well, I think you're an absolute natural. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to think I have a, a good eye for yeah. quirky objects. Yeah. Well, if you just come around to my house, you'll come around, we'll have a little cocktail and you can <laughs> survey all my bits and pieces. <laughs> well, that sounded really rude. <laughs> just a little bit. Steady. Rest and relaxation for all the gang. Sleep tight. 
morning. We're back on the road with our two celebrities. So this car, this morning, she seems a bit easier. Why is she a she? Everything's a she. Really? And I call her a she. So because she's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> How many items have we bought? Playing the game for good man. You're gonna, you're gonna do it all, on. aren't you? We are on track. You're all in. We're and gonna go all in. Come on. It's not a problem. We'll Join go all the in. Big boys. All right. Get in step with step. Well, hey. Oh my gosh. What did you do? We're steaming. <laughs> steaming hot we are. <laughs> and crumbs. We're sitting there having a good gossip, and I said, I think we need to get out the smoke coming out the back of the car. Did you burn the clutch or something? I mean, I wouldn't do no, that. No, it's just this engine overheats, and when it gets past 220, you're meant to put the fan on. And because you were telling me really good gossip, I forgot to put the fan on. Oh, so you're blaming it on me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously not a steps fan. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. <laughs> you didn't show a better leg, that's what it was. Uh, yeah, just like me. Blimey, that was exciting. I better ring the mechanic. Where on earth are they? Oh, have they gone back to the 80s or then something? They probably have. That DeLorean. It's fixed. <laughs> Phew. It looks oh, good. It is. Oh, yeah, well done. Look at that. You've oh, got... this is easier now. I've got trousers on. How, how very glamorous. Go Claire. on. Mind your Watch head. your head. Yeah. Yes. Good Watch morning. Your head. Good Hello, morning. my dear. Hello. Morning. How are you doing? Hello, partner. How You're are good? you? Yeah, really good, thank very you. Very good. Morning, morning. you OK? Good. 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 Yeah. What a beautiful place. Well, we've, we've had... down. Yeah. Really? We've had it? a malfunction, a DeLorean malfunction <laughs> <Okay>. today. <laughs> As for antique shopping, how did you do yesterday? We did well. Did you? Yeah. I'm really We've got something to show you, haven't we? What should I show you ours first? Shall we show us? Where is it? It's on the back. Shall I get it? Behind the seat, yeah. Watch your head. OK. I will let Claire oh, describe it. Enough. This is yeah. the first thing I saw when we went into that shop. It was made by a soldier, an American soldier, during the war in the 40s, and he was driving down the road and he saw a little boy crying on the road. They actually yeah. got out of the tank, really, yeah. and gave the toy tank to the boy who was crying. It's Hand fantastic. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Isn't that lovely? That's, that is a beautiful story. That Beth, is a beautiful story. The person that's going to buy this will not care about that. Oh, yeah. hey, <laughs> you're ruthless. <laughs> yes. How much did you pay for it? It started off at 200, 200. and we got it for 120. Yeah. Wow. Do you think you've paid the right price for it? Yeah. Do you... I think we've paid right. the money. <laughs> You're horrible! He doesn't rate it. That. I'm thinking profit, though. Shall I show you them what? £65. Oh, price. Very... Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here are. Here are. Not, not, amazing that... coincidence. Did you chat to her? That was yeah, jolly kind. And was upstairs. James, are you magic, stealing magic. pub furniture? Ma pub. That's oh, a pub table. How dare you, David? It's yeah. a stand. It's uh, Chinese. It's uh, lacquered, very nice sort of Art Deco label underneath there. Oh. Okay. So it's probably about Retail. 1920s. Yeah. But I like the flowers, I like the iris. Yeah. So it's got iris on the friezes carved there, yeah. and iris is on the top. And the story behind this, there was a little Japanese boy. <laughs> 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 How much? How much? Well, how much do you think? 50 to 80. No, I think over 100. It was 70. Mm -hmm. oh, £70. Okay. OK, that's all right. That's OK, okay. nothing wrong with that. Do it's a we need good to thing. Worry? No. See Come on, good luck. Do it. We've good got luck. big well, shopping. Well, well, we'll let somebody pick that up. Shall we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, we're driving on, that one. Just ask. Go on. Luck. See you later. driving. Bye. <laughs> oh, oh, the handle works. Please, well have you got keys? While they banned some rubber, here's a reminder of what else they've spent their pennies on. From her £400, Claire also bought the ship's wheel. She has £160 to spend today. Do you want to go for lunch or something? Do you want to go <laughs> H also has the two barbers' chairs and the hall chair. If you're wrong, I'm knocking on your door. Big spender H has only £45 left. What do you know about steps? Tell me. I know they're very successful. Uh, sort of high, high, high energy action pop group, weren't they? Well, that's, that's lovely, but what songs do you know? Bee Gees. Anything by the Bee Gees, really. Well, we didn't cover everything by the Bee Gees. <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> no! So, what are your thoughts on the Chinese table? Well, I don't I didn't really get it. That I, I imagined in the 70s, my mum would have put a telephone on that. <laughs> Claire and David have made it to the Gloucestershire village of Staunton. Oh, perfect. No parking, that'll do us. That'll do us. <laughs> Pretty, old and interesting. No, not the car, the name of the shop.
Claire's got 160 smackers to spend. Right. So tell me why you like it. I like the colour of the wood. Is it rosewood? Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I like the, the brass and I love, you know, it, it's worn and it's... I'm not sure. Is it um, a writing box? Would you put your ink in here? I can see there's remnants of ink. Yes. There. Yes. Maybe pens, pencils. Yes. Yeah, sharpener, rubber. Rosewood has been a prized cabinet-making material for its rich hues and beautiful grain. Although it's an antique and equal to sell, international trade in rosewood is strictly controlled. Interesting, if you look at the side there, Claire, look at the handles. They are mm. completely flat and flush. The reason for that is that it was made to travel. Because if you had big, bulky, sticky-out handles and you put it onto a carriage or a ship, it would scrape the sides. It needs to fit into little compartments, nice and flush, with no bits protruding. That's right, David. No bits protruding, what we all want. Campaign boxes were made and used well into the 19th century. Lord Byron and Charles Dickens were huge fans. Queen Victoria came through in 1837 mm. and departed in 1901, so it's a big, big yeah. area. I'm going to say it's early Victorian. I'm going to say that's 1840, 1850. So wow. that's proper antique territory. It's beautiful. Pretty, are these pretty. pieces rare or are they easy to get hold of? They're quite easy to get hold of because, yeah. uh, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Do you have a laptop? Ah, oh, OK, it's the equivalent. I have a laptop. Yeah. That's a laptop from 1850. Really? It is exactly I love that. that. It isn't priced. Dealer Paul, let's talk cash. Paul? Paul? Paul, come here. Oh, she's... <laughs> oh no, yeah. here she goes. Let me talk to you, my son. <laughs> oh, my Lord. We are on limited funds. Yeah. I fancy 20 quid. OK, that's a little bit low. Can we go 25? 22. Blimey. Blimey. Oh. Blimey, I think we've done a deal. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thank you. You are ruthless, <laughs> but I like you. A skilled negotiation, Claire. Nice one. Tell me how to open this door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> with these... acrylic nails. Ah, right, OK. Yeah, so no acrylic nails. <laughs> fingers in and open. There we go, OK. Ah, a bijouterie box. Tell me about it, come on. OK, so it is Victorian. This was height of fashion in the late Victorian period and it is the Art Nouveau period. But that was made in 1890 for someone absolutely bang on trend. This is not like a traditional person. This is a, a young, vibrant, successful woman about town, just like you, Claire Sweeney, <laughs> in 1890. You would have bought that. It's gorgeous. It weighs a ton. Until the Victorian era, owning jewellery was unusual. After the Industrial Revolution, Bijouterie became much more affordable and little white metal boxes such as this were all the rage and would have lived on your dressing table. What so. is the best price you could do for the two? For you, 50 quid for the two. So that's 28 for the box. Yeah, yeah happy? That's fine. Absolutely fine. Deal. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you, Paul. There we go. Absolute Fantastic. pleasure. Thank you. Right, I will give you some money then, shall I? There we go. After some slick dealing from Claire, we have the campaign writing box for £22. Wow. And the Victorian jewellery casket for 28. Now, new best mates, James and H, are taking a break from shopping. <laughs> They're going mining. Yes, honest gov. We're going underground. We're going, it's going to be lovely. Going underground, oh. going underground. <laughs> Come on, I've just heard you singing. Join. Going, going underground, underground, going underground. <laughs> <laughs> nice thistle. We're heading for the village of Clearwell in Gloucestershire. The ground deep beneath the Royal Forest of Dean is rich in minerals, which has given a plentiful bounty of iron ore since the Stone Age. But these caves are also home to humankind's first paint pot, a pigment that's been mined here for centuries, ochre. H and James are heading underground to find out more. First of all, we need to get kitted out the car. Okay. Well, let's see it's on. Right, this looks like the right Spoiler place. Spoiler seats. OK. Oh, this looks glamorous. God, this, I think we get really dirty. This is not the place for a yeah. navy blue suit. Indeed, it is not Jim Bates. I don't think my train is going. <laughs> no, I, I think you're going to need something else, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I think they're a bit glam. Yeah, they are a bit glam for caving. This pair are hopeless. Do you think it's grey to represent Jumbo the elephant? <laughs> huh? The Dumbo, wasn't it? 
<laughs> well, Jumbo, uh, and I mean Jimbo, and H are going to explore the honeycomb caverns here that have produced the very same ochres that Neolithic man would have used to decorate their walls. Oh, here we are. Maximum speed. Life. <laughs> Maximum speed. Well, I think I currently go at about three miles an hour. So really? It's like I'm less. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. Wow, that's huge, isn't it? It's Look at that. It's just... Isn't that clever? It's beautiful. Wow. H and James are meeting with free miner Jonathan Wright. Hi there. Oh, hello. Hi there, you're John? Yes, I am. Hi, H. H, Hi. James, Hi. good to meet you. Jonathan is owner of the mine, but it was handed down to him by his late father, Ray. His passion ensured this natural phenomenon could be seen by one and all. This part is famous for mining, isn't it? Yeah, for coal and iron, but iron came first. And even before they mined for the metal iron, they were mining for ochre. And my father began mining here back in the 60s and opened it up to the public to show them what was here because was it's it? just amazing underground. Yeah, yeah. And he felt that people ought to be aware of it because when you walk around, you'd have no idea this was yeah, underground. You so what exactly is a free miner? To be a free miner, you have to have been born in the 100 of St Breville's, so, so that's the Forest of Dean, basically, in every village around it. If you've worked a year and a day in a mine, then you can register as a <coughs> free miner, and you can work for iron, coal or stone anywhere in the Forest of Dean. This ancient and exclusive right came about because the free miners used their indispensable skills to help the Crown, particularly during the Scottish Wars in the 14th century. Interesting. They'd been used in wars in France and Scotland and places like that. Huh? And were so useful undermining castle walls. Oh, I breaking see. Breaking sieges. Yeah. So, so the free miners breached the castle walls yeah, to so get they in? they were like... Um, a bit of a secret weapon that mm -hmm. the king would use yeah, to break the siege. King Edward I was so grateful for the work that the free miners did that he granted them the minerals in the Forest of Dean so they could mine and make a living. The labyrinth of caves here cover an area of over 600 acres with miles of passageways that are rich in this ancient natural material, ochre. So what, what was ochre used for? Ochre was used for making paints as cosmetics, as a glaze on pottery. It had lots of uses as, oh, a, as really? a pigment, as a colour. <laughs> this is the ochre. You can see the bright colours that they... You can see the yellows. And it looks like rust on, on a car. Or... It is, yeah. It is very similar. It is a type of rust, but it's a very pure type of rust. The best stuff, you know, really is like butter. But this is very good as well, but it needs a bit of processing. Come on, H. Get stuck in, boy. Right, yeah, let right. me mess it up Guess first. first. Remember to pick ahead of and you. Stand back. And stand right. I'm going to turn my light on a bit, cos I can't actually see anything. There you so go. the area there. So I go a bit ahead of me. Right, watch out. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Funny enough. OK. <laughs> Lovely action. Ah, oh, it's all gone down my sleeves. <laughs> and you're after the butter. Yeah, we need three tonnes of that. Three tonnes of that. Oh, it's quite coarse, isn't it? I think it's incredible that... Thousands of years ago, there would have been miners here in this spot. How, how many would be in a space like this? Um, mainly families, working with your father, your uncle, you know, that sort of thing. Because it must need teamwork down underground, doesn't it? Yeah, you rely a lot on, on the person that you work with to keep it a safe environment and, yeah. and look after you. Kind of like antique dealing? No. <laughs> Uh, antique dealing is far more hazardous. <laughs> You're treacherous. It's war out there. <laughs> yeah. By chipping away at the iron ore, the naturally occurring pigments are collected in a fine powder, which are either washed or milled for use as an artist's tint. This method has remained the same since ancient times. So what, what, what's going on in these pots, then? Well, these are the main colours that we get now. You've got, obviously, a very deep, beautiful purple and a lovely red that was known as Terra Rosso d'Inglaterra during the Renaissance in Italy. And it seems that it was exported to Italy and possibly used by artists like Michelangelo. Well, for the Sistine Chapel. There are receipts that show that the pigment came from Bristol Port oh. and this was the nearest source of this colour. Wow! 
Incredible. From early man to Renaissance genius Michelangelo, the natural ochres here are all testament to this primeval industry that survived for over four and a half thousand years. We're going into the last antique shop. Need a bit of wall paint. You want to frighten the dealer. You're not like Rambo. <laughs> well, I'm ready for action. Oh, James. Come on, come on, H. We've got buying to do. John, thank you. Bye, John. I'll leave you to your mining. <laughs> <laughs> what about Claire and David? Oh, H is loving it. Is he? He's really competitive. <laughs> Let's choose something that will make money. Passing the buck to me, then. Yeah. All right. Make us some money. This pair have crossed the border into Wales. They're in the town of Chepstow. So, Claire, this is your final shop on the Antiques Road Trip. Lovely. No more after this. This fine emporium is run by Dealer Dawn and her super cute pooch, Molly. Oh, look. Give me five. Oh, my goodness. There you are. There's so much to see. <laughs> I know. Just focus. Don't panic, don't panic. You're not panicking, are you? Give her a chance, David. Claire has £110 in her purse. I love Toby Jones, yeah. right? Go on. When I was, like, 19 working on the cruise ships, I remember doing a world cruise, mm. and you had days and days at sea, and it was quite boring. So I went to Toby Jug making classes, and I made this Toby Jug, and I was so proud of it. And then I got my first boyfriend, and when we broke up, the only thing I took was my Toby Jug. Oh. I've still got it now. Is there no end to your talents, Claire? Let's shimmy and take our way over to the other pair, where the dance lessons continue. I'm guessing you don't know any of our moves, then? Well, you've, you have demonstrated the tragedy one. I have, yeah. OK. It's very good. So, did you have moves for every song? Yeah, and I, that I guess that was the appeal. Everybody yeah. could join in with yeah. us. Yeah. And, yeah, to kind of dance their troubles away. Yeah. Like the birdie song. Did you do the birdie song? Do you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to say yes. <laughs> The fellows have put their foot down and have arrived on H's home turf. We're in Pontypool, in South Wales. Nice. Oh, Isn't that good. I am excited already. Let's get in there. Last shot. Yeah. Do some damage. You need a hand? No, fine. <laughs> I'm getting used to this. Finally. <laughs> H has £45 left to spend in here. Roof rack ragamuffins. Nice to, nice to meet you. you. Hi, James. Hi, I'm Alan. Great to meet you. Good um, to meet you. Our and just give us a show if you need anything. We will. These are really exciting pieces. Look <laughs> at these. I like that. It's an old fire oh, extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Yeah. Given new life in a in a light. But where's the auction? Harrogate. Would there be much of a call for this in Harrogate? I don't know. I don't know. It's quirky. It's quirky, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, uh, the, 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 I think that's quite fun. I think that's ingenious. <laughs> But it's not quite hitting the mark for H. Back in Chepstow, how's Claire getting on? It's the bling cabinet here. Do we like a bit of bling? I love bling. You do? OK, let's go bling. We've bought nothing silver. We've gone pewter, metal. Let's go something a bit glam. Oh. That's lovely. There. What? What the, is it? That. OK, let me... Dawn, can I get inside? Is it open? Yep. It's just switch the ah, switch off okay, on I've the got... top. Oh, switch the... Oh, that is lovely. OK, that is absolutely... Oh, Claire, that would suit you. That what is... What is it? It's a belt buckle. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think she likes it. Um, Do you love it? Yeah, she does. Yeah, it's, She's going it's, wild. Well, yeah, it's lovely. It's yeah. more than likely a nurse's belt buckle. Ah, now we're talking. It's just there is the impressed hallmark. Is OK, it? yeah. OK, so yeah. what you've got, you've got a lion side on, that sterling silver. Mm -hmm. You've got a leopard's head looking at you. That tells you that it was made in London. So it's a late 19th century... Oh, that's lovely, then. ..Victorian belt buckle. Yeah. When a nurse qualified, a belt buckle would be issued by the hospital or given as a congratulatory gift from family. The decoration is very late 19th century with all those swirls. Look at the face. That looks like the Green Man. Have you ever heard of the Green Man? No, what's the Green Man? It's an ancient figure, ancient motif representing nature. OK. And you find him in all cultures around the world. And he also represents rebirth. So this may well be a maternity nurse. So that is a little gem. It's, it's absolutely amongst gorgeous. Amongst everything in that cabinet, it's a, it's isn't a it? It's a delicious thing. Well done, There's you. There's no doubt about it. But Let's it's all much. down to price, isn't it? Let's mosey over to Dawn and Molly. 
Molly, you seem very intelligent. How much have you got on the nurse's silver belt? Well, he did have 45. <laughs> you, Molly, I can't... I didn't think the dog actually spoke. Molly, that was amazing. <laughs> Molly, what's the best price? I think we could do it for 30. It's a deal. Gives you paw. Good girl, Molly. Good girl. Yay! Oh, high Molly. five, high five. High five, Molls. Oh, we you're got a good deal. girl. 30 whole pounds on the nurse's silver belt buckle. Wow, quite a collection of things, eh? I just can't wait for the auction now. Well, the excitement levels really power up as well now. Indeed they do. Meanwhile, over in Pontypool... I love this whole industrial feel. I love this lamp. I would actually buy that myself. If we don't buy this for the auction, I'm buying it for me. So that would be secured against somebody's bench, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I love that. And it what just it moves, it? doesn't it? Angle poise lamp, yeah. It's quite... It's, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Does it work? Well, I, it looks like it's been rewired. Look, there's Alan. Ask him about it. Alan, can, can, yes. can we see... Does it work? Yes, it does. It's, um, it's one of our traders uh, called Rustin Relics who've actually... Um, he's an electrician by trade, so it's all yeah. been rewired. It's on yeah. new light fit, there's new cable in. He likes to take old pieces and just basically just not do anything with the patina yeah. or anything. Yeah, just rewire no, it's it. nice. It's got an integrity, it. this, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. You wouldn't mind just plugging it in. Have we got a plug? Oh, just yeah. see it in its full glory. So there are... Look, what does it look like? Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Oh, lush. I really love that. So that would just screw into a bench or you could screw it onto something, bolt it onto something. And it's original. It's quite naive in the way it looks as well. I think it's nice. I think it's nice, as you say, having its originality, mm -hmm. its sheen. Yeah, and it will appeal to a lot more people than a fire hydrant, even yeah. though I love yeah. that. All right, let's get down to the crunch. <laughs> so that's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. That's above our budget. It's priced at £75. Oops. Shall we tell you our budget and you can say yay or nay? Go on, they're trying to... Yeah. Our budget is £45. Ooh. Um, <laughs> and we're not playing a game. That's yeah. literally all we have. I think we, can, we could probably get there on that. And I, I, I'd profit. recommend that. So, okay. I'm not even going to say any more. Thank you very much. There we go. Well done, Alan. Oh, really my goodness. Good. Yeah. That's a lovely buy. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, I'm quite sad that it's going to auction because I would have had that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem at all. OK, Alan. It is £45 there. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You are a gentleman. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Yeah, really kind. Thanks, Alan. Not a problem. Cool. Hey. I'll definitely be back. We're off. Come on. They've only gone Come on. and blown the budget with that final buy, the lovely industrial lamp. Bye. That's it. The shopping is over. It's official. So there's nothing else we can do now, Claire, nothing. It's all in the hands of the auction. Now, have you been to an auction before? I might, yes. And this is the exciting part for me, to see if our instincts have worked. But for now, it's time for a well-earned rest. Sweet dreams. Can you believe it? It's auction time. We're off to the tea and bun capital of Harrogate in North Yorkshire, which is handy. Well, I'm really excited about this auction. What? I've been beside myself for days. Really? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. confident then? I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm confident. I know I've got a bit of money in the bank. Oh, have you? And I reckon you've blown all yours. Well, how, how would you even come to that conclusion? <laughs> well, like, I know <laughs> what you're like. Today's sale is at Thompson's Auctioneers. There they are. Here we are. They're really good looking. Hello, the boys. Looking as dapper as ever. I know. We're in. You're in the what drive. great doors. Morning, team. It works! Look, there's a small Welshman in here. How is it in there this morning? Help me out. Tell us. Come on. Definitely not that. Good morning. Good morning, morning, morning to see team. You. How are you, Charlie? Are you all right? Are you? are you excited? Yeah. Always excited. Me too. Joint. Let we battle first. commence. Yeah. That's what battle I Battle commence. Well, it's tanks versus barbershop chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it is. Claire and David have spent £320 on five lots, including that Victorian bijouterie casket. Aha, here it is. Look how pretty that is. It is quite pretty, isn't it? What is it, pewter? Pewter, yeah. They sometimes call it Britannia metal. It's silver pewter. And it's a, a trinket box, a jewellery box. Yeah. I just think these things are so of their time. They are of their time, aren't they? Anyway, good luck with that. Yeah. Good luck to you too. H and James spent all of their £400 kitty. 
they've decided to sell the two barbers' chairs as two separate lots, which means they've got five lots for auction, including the 19th century hall chair. I think that's lovely. Yeah, that is lovely. It's really that, lovely. And that's a proper antique. There would have been two originally because they're always made in pairs. Yeah. But that's a beauty. So they're going to do all right, aren't they? I think they've got some quite good things. Are we in trouble? Probably. <laughs> Kate Higgins is the lady presiding over the rostrum today. What's she got to say about our gaggle of goodies? The 1950s barber chairs with the orbital seat to them, my favourite lot in today's sale. We have two of them, so we are giving the option if the first person buys the first chair, they have the option of buying the second chair at the same price. The late 19th century, early 20th century ship's wheel, not often you see them, but a lot of people have inquired about it today. And I'd love it to be one of the better lots in today's sale. How thrilling. We have a plentiful supply of bidders in the room, on the phone and online. Get ready. The auction's about to start. Exciting. There you go. There you go. This is where you are now out of control. <laughs> Right, Claire's World War II scratch-built tank is first to go. Commission starts with me at 35. Do I see 40? 40 now in the room. Do I see five anywhere? Come on. In the room at 40 pounds. Come on. Finished, I shall sell at 40. Oh! Two, three, five, two, eight. <laughs> That's a whack, isn't it? That is a whack. I'm gutted, but I'm also Hello. ecstatic. <laughs> yeah. What a shame, eh? Someone's got a lovely piece of social history there. Would you pay 120 again for it? No. I would. I would. <laughs> I would. I would. <laughs> You're supposed to be the expert. H, it's your turn with the 19th century hall chair. 20 anywhere. 20 we have. Do I see five? 25. 30, sir. 30. 35. No, you should have. 40. We. Seated bid at £40. Pounds. Are we finished? I shall sell at 40. <laughs> that's actually a very good buy for somebody. For 35. Oh, that's because you made a fiver. Yeah, a fiver. Excellent start, H. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Claire's campaign writing box is next. I will start with my commission at 40. Do I see five? Come on. With me here at 40, five anywhere. On. on commission, then. I will sell at 40 pounds. So, oh. oh. but you're lucky that was a <laughs> And that's your first profit of the day. Well done. So, someone's bid 40 on Yes, it's like yeah. an absentee bid. Yeah. It's an offering from H next the industrial lamp. I am 40 bid. Five 40 now. bid. On commission at 40, do I see five? 45 we have, 50 anywhere. In the room at 45, I shall sell at 45. <laughs> 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 Washing our faces. You're loving this, aren't you? <laughs> a break even actually means a small loss after sale room fees. But you're still ahead of Claire. Uh, I'm going to start my own shop, I think. You should. Mm, I love this. <laughs> It's the turn of the ship's wheel now for Claire. With me here at 50, do I see five? Go on. With me now at 50 pounds, 55, 60. Go on. 65 gentlemen's bid, do I see 70 Go anywhere? On. In the room at 65, I shall sell at 65. Ouch! 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 Ouch. One, four, five, oh, six. Yeah, there's a big ouch. Even the auctioneer thought it would fare well. I actually thought it was going to do better than that. Yeah. How about the Chinese plant stand from H? With me here at 40. Better five, in the room. 50. 55 in the room. 60. 65, sir? 65. Yeah. 70. Five more. Yeah. Come on. No, seated bid here at 70. Do I see five? Come on. Somebody else. 75. New oh, bidder. Hey. 80, sir? Go 75. On. In the room at 75. I shall sell at 75. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Not well done. You're good at this, H. Yet another profit. That scared me. I didn't think that was going to do that. No, I didn't. No. That's good. Well yeah. done. Come on, Claire. Let's see if your bijouterie casket can deliver some riches. Twenty pounds. Ten anywhere. Ten. Fifteen. They are all with interest. Five. Thirty. Thirty with the lady. Thirty-five anywhere else. Thirty-five. 40, 35 here, 40 anywhere. In the room at 35, I shall sell Still at profit. 35. 
Hold on, hold on. It feels hold good, on. doesn't it? Hold on. Hold on. It feels good. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Even a pound is a profit. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, Claire. We're going in the right direction. If you lose it's money, so it's so exciting though when you're seeing two people bidding against each other yeah. for your item. I know, you just don't know when so it's going to stop. I know, it's thrilling, yeah. isn't it? Talking of thrilling, it's H's last lots of the day. The barber's chairs. Barbers are very, very trendy, yeah, aren't they, now with yeah. the hipsters, yeah. the beard trimming, everything yeah. is... It's all these barber shops flying yeah. up everywhere. I could see that on Carnaby Street. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I will give you the option. If you buy the first chair, you may have the second chair at the same price. She's a lovely lady. I will start with my commission at 80. Do I see 90 anywhere? Oh, with we me need here more. at 80 pounds, 90 do I see. On commission, then, at 80 pounds. I shall sell at 80 pounds. <laughs> and they will take both of those. Yep, that's £80 for each chair. Total, 160 But that's somewhat short of H's purchase price, and it's a big loss. Oh, dear. I gutted that went for that price. Yeah. I would have paid more for that. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Claire's nurse's silver belt buckle is our final lot for today. You yeah. could definitely wear it on stage, eh? Do you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You could Rock get away that with buckle. It. Yeah. I will start with my commission at £30. Do I see five anywhere? Oh, they're worth more than 35 that. in the room. 40, 5, 50, 5, 60, 5, 70. Oh, my gosh. Gentlemen's oh. bid is 70. 5, 8, no, 75 seated. Come now, on. 80 anywhere else. One more. In the room at 75. Come on, one more, one more. Now at 75. That's so close, but That's brilliant. Very good. Well done. That's, well done. Well done. That's good. Wow. What a lovely way to end. Amazing profit, Claire. Who do you think's won? I think oh, it's difficult, very difficult. I think I marginally think... you are in the lead. I do. Well, do you think, think between so? the four yeah. of us we could work it out? Come on. Of course, we try on, isn't it? Time to figure out the figures. From £400, H and James, after all auction costs, made a loss of £137.60. Their final figure is £262.40p. Starting with the same sum, Claire and David, after all auction fees, made a loss of £110.90. They made a final sum of £289.10. As they lost the least, so to speak, they are today's triumphant winners. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> it's, H, H, it's, H, it's a travesty. It's a tragedy, is what, is what it is. Son would do now. No, 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 no. Go on, you can do that whilst driving away. <sighs> Bye, you two. Well, well done. Well yeah, done. You did. Well done indeed. I'm really <laughs> chuffed for you. Lena. You'll get over it eventually. I'll get over it yeah. eventually. One day. See you guys. Bye. I didn't expect that result, H. To be fair, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually genuinely really pleased with you. No, that doesn't sound sincere. <laughs> Try it again. All right, I'm gutted. <laughs> <laughs> the truth wins out. Farewell, we'll miss you.